Yeah, so uh, fr from the last talk, we get we arrive at this slide and having a test for non-MEV needs. But in this talk, I'm done talk about, you know, sorry, but this formulation of MEV is mid. So specifically what it means, uh, why? Because it's like a party guy, you know, a, a guy at the corner of a party saying they don't know this is not MEV, while the other people, all of us are like, yes, we know, and we don't care if it's a good <laughs> meme, and it's, uh, you know, memes are important, memes are more important than, you know, arguably uh, many other things in our life. Um, <laughs> and then, but there is also another uh, extreme in the community are uh, vouching for a formalization of MEV, right? Uh, so some uh, common pitfalls on this uh, on, on the word uh, on the definition of the word MEV is that we give up on the clarity of the notion, we over formalize it such that we lose the memes, right? We, it is no longer a meme term, and it's lost in, and we are getting lost in the detail of the real value of defining MEV. So in this talk, I will give a clear definition of MEV that points to a solution, to points clearly to the solution recipes that on uh, how we should solve MEV. And uh, I'm not uh, going to give a mid-curve uh, formalization, nor am I abandoning our memes. Mm -hmm. So what is MEV? So by the end of the talk, you will see that MEV is Al Capone, Evil Deity, and Louis the Sixteenth. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is MEV. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, so, so to um, start, we see that, so, so, so why Al Capone's mafia is MEV? So because mafia extractable value, you know, fits the M, uh, arises, from, uh, arises when one agent or a coalition of agents gains an asymmetric knowledge of another agent's private information. So this condition on there e exists uh, an asymmetric sophistication between agents. So uh, very easy examples include sandwich internalized front running or uh, in traditional finance, we see that people trading, uh, one strategy is that tra people trading on the limit of other books in balance. So uh, which is essentially a, a form of one agent gaining knowledge of another agent's utility or intent, right? When you see more bid than ask on the book, then you take the best ask and you make the best bid. Um, so then evil data is a Moloch, why is it MEV? Uh, so Moloch is tradable value, is a value that was surrendered to the Moloch, i.e. on coordination within your mechanism, your allocation mechanisms for people's preferences. So one example of this is uh, the negative externalities caused by inexpressive mechanisms. So for example, suppose you have a random ordering and people uh, spam the network and, and that is the only way they can express their uh, preferences and it is very one dimensional way. Right, so you have a kind of a shrink transaction quality trilemma, and there are of course many other examples. For so, for example, in the traditional high frequency trading arms race example, um, uh, people uh, the mar uh, the cost that market maker spends on arms race uh, gaining latency advantages was channeled as uh, ch charging higher spreads for users. So the externality is uh, transferred from sophisticated agents to unsophisticated agents. There are some other examples. And so finally, Louis XVI, the monarch, why is him MEV? So monarch is tradable value arises from the fact that the coordinator, so for example, the sequencer or the validator has the ultimate power of deciding what the ordering or the allocation of specification on state is. So by specification on state, I specifically mean which specification or property does the next state satisfy. You can, for those of you familiar with programming languages, you can see that this directly links into the, um, you know, formal verification. You have a, a program and the specification that the next state must satisfy. So then some examples of this include that the validators currently, you know, in Ethereum or other chains, accrue value because they have the power of determining what content is in the block. And uh, many other examples for uh, in, in TradFi, such as co-location fees and cross-chain, such as cross-domain uh, market makers for swaps. So then we can see that MEV arises from three distinct properties, the mafia, the monarch, and the monarch. So now, a, a little bit more formalized. Uh, suppose that M is uh, the monarch in our universe or our game E, and W is the uh, social welfare function. Then we know that the monarch extractable value equals to the welfare that is uh, achievable by the best possible mechanism for our game to allocate specification on state minus the welfare of the current monarch. 
and the monarch will be equals to the uh, welfare of the current monarch uh, minus the uh, welfare that uh, that already existed, uh, you know, uh, in the original game e without our current monarch as a coordinator. So you can see those are uh, cl closely tied to the idea of externalities, right? Uh, and then from our definition, we know immediately that monarch EV plus monarch extractable value equals the welfare of the best possible mechanism in our, uh, in our game minus the welfare of the original game. So, so it equals the constant, right? So, it, so monarch EV plus monarch EV is innate to the game E and does not depend on our, cho our choice of the mechanism M. Um, and finally, uh, defining a Mafia EV is a little bit hard, but harder, but the intuition is that Mafia EV depends on the specific sophistication details or the power of agents that is existent in M. So uh, what this means is that how much exposed knowledge or last look uh, one agent can have over other agents or their coalitions. Uh, so then we can see that th those three values have, very di uh, have distinct sources, and those sources of value are non-overlapping. Thus, we can call them you know, our new definition collectively three EV, mafia, monarch, monarch, extractable value. You know, it forms the sum type, it's perfection. Um, so then fr what this implies is that uh, the resolution recipe, right? The future is in our hands. We know that a uh, mafia plus monarch plus monarch is 100% of the MEV and that monarch EV plus monarch EV equals to a constant depending only on the original game. Uh, but the percentage of monarch versus monarch depends on M. Our, our choice of the mechanism. So the, well, you, you can already see that there is a nice link with the notion of price of anarchy in traditional mechanism design here, right? Uh, although in traditional mechanism design, of course, like the, you know, there are theories, they want bonds. So they have, uh, so these, they define price of anarchy as like the deficient, but now we are interested in values. So, you know, I kind of define it as difference. Um, uh, and then uh, finally, we can see that um, Mafia EV is also a constant depending on our choice of M. So since the sources are distinct, we can adjust the uh, percentage of the three variants of MEV by transforming one form of MEV into another by the, in our designing of a better mechanism M. So I argue that ideally we should have 0% mafia, 0% monarch, and 100% monarch, where the monarch's profits are distributed. So what this specifically means and why is this true is that because mafia relies on the existence that there is one exposed knowledge uh, and there's unsophistication or sophistication between agents, right? There is an uh, asymmetry. And uh, so specifically, once you have this, then uh, the sophisticated agents are gonna charge sort of an unsophistication tax on the other agents and thus this hurts long-term stability of the domain or long-term prosperity. And then why we want 0% monarch is because any value that, or any welfare that is attributed to the monarch is forever lost, it's not recoverable and nor is it redistributable. So then, uh, and why 100% monarch with redistribution is that if there is no redistribution to the monarch, then, uh, then the 100% monarch EV is gonna erode the incentive for people to use your mechanism, right? Because uh, you're essentially creating, uh, reintroducing the value that they would have paid to the monarch by having them pay to the mon monarch instead. So there is a different, you can see there is, uh, uh, so users would be indifferent between paying to the monarch in the original game and paying to the monarch in the meta game. So, you know, this kind of violates the individual rationality guarantees. Um, so then there are, of course, some caveats as to our choice of monarch and our definition. So as we can see that uh, the welfare of the uh, game without the mechanism depends on E, right? So uh, now we assume that the mechanism M uh, represents a domain or a builder or some, just some coalition of agents. Then we can give a kind of, an, have a notion of uh, inter-domain coalition factor K where K equals one if uh, the mechanism is uh, monopolistic across all domains. So here we are kind of cheating a bit. We are including time as another domain. So K is kind of like a discounted n-dimensional preference curve. And uh, an example of the preference curve you can see on the top right corner. And then uh, K equals zero if the mechanism is powerless. So then what this implies is that by forming a larger coalition means the coalition has a higher K. And this enables uh, them to do more credible extortions. 
uh, so what this means is that uh, the monarch extracts value for your collision of agents, you know, forming the uh, mechanism M equals to K uh, multiplied by the original monarch if M and uh, minus M forms the grand collision. So then, uh, of course, uh, this implies the users can also be the monarch if they have a large enough K, right? Uh, and similar for validators, searchers, or builders, you can imagine uh, different mechanisms than what is currently being played in the MEV field. So uh, 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 essentially, the interdomain collision factor represents your collective bargaining power, which determines how the monarch is set up, who we throw as the king, and uh, how the monarch is set up within the game. Uh, so then, however, the, uh, okay, so, 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 there, there are some caveats to the choice, uh, you know, how, how much collisions can you have, right? So you can imagine this formalized as a corporate game where the core of the game might not exist if we have too many inter-domain uh, inter collisions. So uh, this kind of reminds us as the you know, original notion of there exists a non-monotonicity non of coordination and, in, uh, and efficiency. And this also relates back to you know, a notion I would like to call the incompleteness theorem of MEV, right? So you can see that uh, um, the game uh, E cannot continue if there is uh, not enough competition. Uh, what this means is that you can uh, increase the coordination, but it does not always increase the e efficiency of the allocation in reality. And even if you try to eliminate the inefficiencies caused by your extra coordination by using some another credible commitment or coordination device in the meta game, then you're just transferring the monarch extractable value in the original game to the monarch in the wrapped game. Right, so this kind of uh, provides a ground for us to refute any you know, uh, uh, previous ideas by Virgil Griffiths and his whole um, Ethereum as game changing technology argument. Um, so then, uh, the, uh, coming back to this, the specific value of the collision factor K depends on how we set up the game. We can throw or dethrone different monarchs. Ultimately, we want to choose uh, the best mechanism and, and start that is most incentive aligned with the long term prosperity and is most capable of coordination. So you can see there's a trade off over here. And uh, of course, like, <laughs> Why do we want a monarch? Why do we need this meme, right? Why can't we just go the formalization route, you know, full formalization, throwing mass equations? Uh, so the reason for this monarchy abstraction is because the outcome in, uh, contrary to traditional uh, mechanisms, the outcome in MEV is not common knowledge and depends on each agent's private information, which the other agents don't have prior, uh, uh, don't have prior to the MEV time, which is the allocation time or like block building time. So it is hard to analyze the equilibrium within this game, especially when there is, uh, exists an uh, asymmetry, asymmetry in the sophistication of agents. So thus, we reduce the guarantee uh, uh, of, of our mechanism to just have some, some bounds, like some, some loose bounds on, uh, on the incentive compatibility and the individual rationale. Um, so then now to concretize things, we provide some case studies. So specifically, we say that there's, uh, 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 we know that there has, it has been vanilla first come first, first serve and uh, a frequent batch auction style first come first serve where we uh, increase the fairness granularity within the uh, receive order fairness protocol. So what this specifically means is that instead of reporting a strict ordering by the receive order time of the transaction, each individual node now reports a partial ordering to the leader of the uh, ordering consensus protocol. So what this concrete means is that, you know, you just take the smaller than to smaller or equal to. Uh, and then after uh, aggregating each individual node's preference, the monarch, in this case, the leader of the consensus protocol gets a weak ordering by first come first serve. And then, there are, of course, we know there, there must exist some on all the batches in it, uh, which is caused both by the Condorcet paradoxes and the initial partial order reported by each individual node. So now the monarch tries to resolve the order of the unordered batches using auctions, right? So this is why it's frequent batch auction. Uh, and then in reality, why is this more desirable? Like, let, let's peek into some data. So we see that um, in reality, it's over 65% of the Uniswap volume is com comes from arbitrage, it's, you know, maybe statistical. And among the other 35%, it's a big uh, a few, few market makers. 
So what this means is that the, the MEV activity constitutes a huge amount of Ethereum activity. And the burst period on Ethereum, which arises from public information reviews, so for example, some price discoveries happen on Binance or some people, um, some whales send an unprotected transaction into the public mempool. Uh, then uh, once, some, once this, this kind of ev event happens, it takes around 1.2 seconds and 75% and, uh, uh, and of the conflict of preferences on Ethereum Conflict preferences, meaning that there is a conflict within what specification should the next day satisfy. Uh, uh, you know, it happens less than 4% of the time. And so this me means that vanilla first come first serve compared with frequent batch auction first come first serve will be um, bearing the extra negative externalities which cause worse UX, higher fees for users, or centralization in the nodes from 12x more conflict of preferences. So, you know, Bursts of periods of preferences are significant, and just adding some partial ordering, just covering that little 4% window, you can uh, mitigate most of the ne negative externalities on the uh, domain. You can take value back from the malloc, right? So if we use the uh, 3 EV framework to compare those pro two protocols, we can see that they have the same mafia, right? Uh, and, and for Moloch, the, the, first, the vanilla version has much more Moloch because uh, the ma ma vanilla version, nobody can express their preferences in a short burst period, which constitutes most of the activity, right? So, so the Moloch arises from, the tribute to the Moloch arises from uncoordination and an ultra simplified social choice function, right? Where the social choice function is like, I, order, I, order, like I, I choose the preference by the order I receive them. That does not coordinate any of the burst period period MEV, right? And the burst period MEV, you know, typical cases include like permissionless MEV, price discovery, at one came MEV. So, uh, and then, so, so you can see from the graph on the right, right, like we are transforming the mafia slowly into the malloc where, where the value is transferred to the users, so the users have uh, the same payoff, you know, same bad payoff. And then from the monarchy, it's strictly worse, right? But by definition, but also uh, vanilla versions run the wrong monarch, right? Uh, so in, in, in latency games, you um, pay more to AWS or Google Cloud because you know you need to play the <laughs> latency games. And thus, uh, the monarch, you know, Google and Amazon are obviously not incentive aligned with crypto or like whichever domain you adopt your audience protocol on. And of course, it's more centralized because come on, it's like fan. Um, uh, Okay, so now some, some, some concrete examples. Let's see, you know, transformation of 3EV. Does 3EV actually capture most of the uh, existing MEV notions that we have? So for transforming Moloch to Monarch, we see that uh, one form of this is the spread charged by, charged by market maker bridges. Um, from Monarch to Mafia, we see that if in traditional if in previous Ethereum proof of work, the miners were to go rogue and steal bundles, then it would be, you know, they were the mo mo monarch, but they choose to gain an advantage using the asymmetric information, the ability to act on that information. Wait, what? Okay, uh, and then from Mafia to Moloch, the transformation. So for example, you go from a public mempool model to a vanilla first come first serve, right? You el eliminate it public mempool, so you don't have that information asymmetry, but you have that, uh, you know, uh, on coordination, you have a, a very bad allocation of preferences. Uh, which increases Moloch. And then from Moloch to Ma Mafia, you see that, so for example, if a malicious coordinator were to pocket all of the surplus welfare that, that it generates from optimizing the ordering or just existing, you know, from coordination. So this case, um, you, 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 you go from, yeah, Moloch to Mafia. And then oh, what, uh, what we can do to go from uh, uh, Mafia to Monarch is to have programmable privacy, right? So in this case, for example, SGX, you can still do bundle merging or block building or preference aggregation despite that you don't have a asymmetry, uh, asymmetry in the um, information. And then finally, come on, the, uh, the current model of DAO governance is a form of uh, uh, transforming the monarch to the monarch, which is not good, right? So, uh, uh, so, so what this means is that, uh, so DAO exists for coordination, right? But then by launching a DAO token and then allowing it to distribute under a bad tokenomics or like whatever, you're, you're creating a Ponzi, which uh, creates more monarch, right? You could have 
got that to a monarch stage, but then through more decentralization, you have cre recreated the monarch in the meta game of the token game, right? So this reminds us of the previous example of the mono non-monotonic relation between uh, decentralization and coordination and e efficiency in the mechanism. Um, so then some implications of 3EV, right, concretize this idea. What, why is it useful? So then the solution recipes, how to achieve 0%, 0% and distribute to 100%. We can solve Mafia EV using program of privacy, which allows for expressivity and agents can control how their information is used along the path of the determination of the outcome by the monarch. Also, this re relates to the traditional mechanism designs idea of uh, the definition of how, ex what, how expressive a mechanism is, right? Uh, and then concretely, what this means is that you can devise a mechanism for discovering the unsophisticated user's preferences and helping them to communicate this preference to the coordinator or to the mechanism. And then we can solve monarch extractable value um, by just increasing more <laughs> efficiency, right? We can eliminate the price of energy via, via refinement of society or uh, i.e. specialization of labor. So uh, what you can see you know, in, in, in this example is like contrary to the idea of Moloch, you have the idea of a, a Slack, right? So Slack is, ar arises from coordination where uh, it's basically you, you allow somebody to have enough um, modes or like period where they can grind on the higher payoff scene. Um, we, and this is only allowed if you have a highly coordinated, you know, specialization of labor in your society. And then finally, monarch is tradable value. How do we division its value, right? So uh, the value division, we should division it in such a way such, uh, in that we maximize the welfare or the future returns. So what this means is that uh, you probably shouldn't focus on giving tiny kickback, kickbacks to the existing 1% of users, but instead focusing on onboarding the invisible 99% of users as, uh, as monarch is tradable value or like MEV in general grows super linearly with respect of, uh, com compared with the number of order flows that's existent on your domain, right? So for example, the ways you can do this is through investment into wallets or some, some idea like retroactive public goods funding. And of course, this was the original idea by Fair Ordering as well, right? Like the, the idea is that you can, uh, there are 99% of users that would have come to your domain if you order things, you know, fairly. But uh, um, yeah, yeah, so, so it's, it's been on as a narrative. And then, uh, yeah, and so, so then, specific implementations, we know that 3EV was defined by the source of value, right? They are distinct. So the sink, uh, however, the sink of the, those value are different. So for example, the mafia extractable value sometimes sinks into, into monarch, right? So for example, when there is a sandwich the, uh, and then two very competent atomic searchers and the value sinks to the monarch, which is the validators. And then the sink of value uh, impacts the source of value. So I argue that by controlling the sink of the value, we are control. We can already. Uh, we can also impact on um, the source of the value by the cr magic of credible commitments. So some example of credible commitments. I'm not gonna explain, but you can like hit me up later after this talk. Uh, examples include builders as roll up, or the you have a special builder innovation where you you grind on the uh, expressivity of the building language, or you have a decentralization. Of building use SGX tokens to align the incentives or like some more fancy things. But uh, all of those conditions on, uh, all of those solutions conditions on low enough interdomain coalition factor, right? Uh, remember from before, once you have uh, too much coalition or too much coordination, then you can't possibly you know, ha have a good mechanism, or or like it's very hard to do so. So, uh, and, and that a low, uh, a low enough factor means that you have high enough competition which means the market is contestable. So uh, I claim that having more competition in the game by incentivizing having more competition in the game is right curve behavior and optimizing the ordering by learning more about the preference microstructures and then grinding on the design of the mechanism is mid curve. So uh, contestability is an important tool and it can only be realized if we design the initial market in such a way that it is not centralizing. What this means is that uh, in reality, what this means is that there should not, like, like we should definitely devise a mechanism that where exclusive, or, or exclusive order flow within like exist. to provide some philosophical foundations for the previous, previous talk, right? I said it's mid, now it's time to you know, show some real work, for, show some r real like, test for non-MEVness.
so then remember that uh, Fraga and Russell was debating why, you know, whether the king of French was bold, right, uh, in, in the beginning of 20th century. And they come up with the uh, tests for presuppositions uh, for utterances of sentences. So for example, the utterance of the sentence axis MEV has a presupposition uh, uh, test that there must exist a game E and an allocation or order protocol uh, M and that within M and E, using the three EV definitions, we can indeed see that M is constituted by a type or multiple types of the three EV. So in, uh, so, so in this sense, the utterance of X is MEV has a presupposition of the existence condition of E and M and X being indeed in, in the set of three EV. Thus, uh, if there does not exist such a E and M, which you know, translates into English is that is, if there is absence of a monarch, then the utterance of this sentence X is MEV is false and X is not MEV. So then some a concrete example, imagine Kim and Don are playing a, uh, a prisoner's dilemma, right? So then they both uh, choose to betray. Now suppose there isn't a coordinator, okay. So then um, somebody utters the sentence, he says that the value that Kim and Don is extracting absent a monarch, i.e. 1-1 one, one is not MEV, then this, uh, then, then this value is indeed not MEV by passing the presupposition test, right? If we take a free game view, um, and then, of course, like there are like, context examples, right? like Wittgenstein has this uh, notion of a language game where the context depends on social things. So the utterance of X is MEV, so this sentence might be true as the context of the utterance is social and we might agree on some notion of the game. So if the sentence is provided without context, then the sentence is nonsense and has no truth value. Thus, uh, ultimately, the test of MEV conditions on which philosophical interpretation of language you agree with. If you are Wittgenstein, you know, you're with Wittgenstein and believe believes that the utterance is within the context uh, where it is socially agreeable that a monarch exists. So in the previous rugby case, remember, um, <coughs> uh, we often see that, say that physics is the monarch and then the, over there the value is indeed MEV. Um, okay, so, so, so now some takeaways. Let's change the language game. Are you tired about minor or maximal? Where the grammar isn't even correct. Like, like we say maximal MEV all the time. And we should just say MEV and it conveniently represents a shorthand for the sum type of mafia, malloc, monarch, extractable value, right? Have you been saying MEV because you have poor imagination to come up with a replacement term for minor that keeps the M and makes sense? You know, is, is that what we're doing, you know? Uh, so then the argument is that uh, by changing this language game, we have several benefits. We have, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, this formulation gives you a distinct value, which uh, originates from the source. And then it is more formalizable and it is formalizable in the sense that you don't get lost in the details. It is still keeps the meme and the formalization and the proof only serves as a social process uh, to help people to understand it. And then of course, this settles the bad MEV argument and the trade-off or the transformation between the three value space is clear. What this implies, also this implies a clear solution recipe. So some nurse sniping for you all that is that to research on how monarch extractable value can be distributed and uh, research on the program of privacy solutions for mafia EV. And then finally a presupposition test. And uh, so to conclude, I would like to hypnotize you. 3 v 3 v 3 v 3 v 3 v 3 v 3 v 3 v That's all you can hit me up. Well, I think we all agree that was a fantastic talk. A lot of like the two speakers, we, we said at the beginning that maybe we have time for questions. So let's pick a couple of them. Order, it's going to be hard for me to get there, so maybe you can shout out aloud. <laughs> yeah, good question. So OFAC censorship uh, can be done implicitly using a term, of, uh, using a form of the um, preference curves, but a little maybe. <laughs> Is it Monarch, is it Mafia, or is it uh, Moloch MEV? It is, it is Monarch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but as I said, like, what we want is to shift the structure of the game, right? Remember the interdomain coalition factor. You can unify the users by devising some mechanism to help them become sophisticated and have collective bargaining power. So that is what we ultimately want to do. Yeah. Anyone else? All right, guys. So big round of applause for this amazing talk.